So the Biden administration says that it wants to end Title 42. But then just yesterday, the administration does this and effectively expands the program. How do you reconcile the two? Do you want to end it or keep using it and expand it? Poppy, that's uh, very easily explained, actually. Um, but let me take a step back and, and share with everyone what our underlying approach is. And that is to build safe and orderly pathways for people to come to the United States who qualify, to cut out the smugglers that are so ruthless, that are causing so much death, tragedy, and trauma, to incentivize people to use these lawful pathways and not take the dangerous journey and place mm -hmm. their lives in the hands of the smugglers. That is our underlying policy. We are uh, unable to use our ordinary legal authorities because a court in Louisiana has compelled us, has forced us to use the Title 42 authority, that expulsion authority, to the extent that we can. And so we are incentivizing through these lawful programs mm -hmm. that Rosa referenced, and we are disincentivizing using the authority that we're yeah. obligated to use right now. And I hear you about the federal judge in Louisiana. That was in May of last year, but, but then in, in November, uh, after that, the federal judge in, in D.C. ordered the end of it, and now it's up in the hands of the Supreme Court. You talked about smugglers and this policy, but isn't that a, a hope and not a guarantee? Because you've got a lot of Democrats, including four Democratic senators, who say that they are disappointed in this plan. They call it an inhumane expansion of the Trump era Title 42, and they say it will, quote, further enrich smuggling networks. How do you know it won't? That is, Poppy, that is not what we have seen um, through the successful launch of precisely the program we announced yesterday, but when we uh, implemented it with respect to the Venezuelan nationals. We saw Venezuelan nationals willing to wait and apply through the process that we're expanding as of yesterday. We saw them wait to apply to avoid the smugglers. We saw a 90% drop in the number of encounters of Venezuelan nationals in between our ports of entry. And we saw an increasing number use our process and fly safely to the United States, knowing they were pre-qualified to enter and to gain work authorization, a very successful launch that we are now building upon. But you would concede this is an expansion of the Trump era plan to deal with the crisis at the border, because you're now applying it to three more countries, Cuba, Haiti, Nicaragua. Poppy, uh, what we have done has no resemblance to what the prior administration did with respect to individuals uh, who are seeking humanitarian relief. The Trump administration tried to shut down our asylum system in its entirety. We're yeah. building safe and lawful and orderly well, pathways. Fundamentally, though, Fundamentally, Poppy, mm -hmm. we are dealing with a broken immigration system. Yeah. Everyone understands it to be so. The, the president on day one mm -hmm. presented a legislative package to fix that broken system. We need Congress to act. I was specifically talking, as you know, Secretary, about Title 42, not the other ways in which the past administration dealt with uh, immigration and, and migrants at the border. But I do want to ask you, because you brought up asylum, uh, and how you, your administration is handling this so differently for asylum seekers. The Department of Homeland Security this week is now proposing uh, a new rule that would place additional restrictions on migrants seeking asylum in the United States. But this is what you told my colleague Jake Tapper in September of 2021. Do you think that asylum seekers who are fleeing violence, fleeing political instability, fleeing natural disasters, are they welcome in the United States? They most uh, certainly are. And U.S. law says clearly, uh, US code, 8 U.S. Code 1158, that anyone that sets foot in this country can seek asylum. Has that changed? Oh, it has not. It has not, Poppy. What we are doing is trying to bring order and safety to the asylum system. We are trying to cut out the smugglers. And so what we are doing is incentivizing people to come in an orderly way, in a safe way, 
to our ports of entry rather than placing their lives in the hands okay. of smugglers. I will tell you, I have been to the border uh, uh, nearly 20 times, and each and every visit, mm -hmm. I have spoken with our frontline personnel about the tragedies that they have witnessed firsthand. We have an obligation to cut out the ruthless smuggling organizations and to open our arms to individuals who qualify for asylum. We are trying to do both mm -hmm. through the policies that we are implementing. So let's talk about those people because yes, you've been to the border so many times uh, and so has our colleague Rosa Flores who our viewers just heard from. She has covered this extensively. Last month, she spoke with a migrant family about the terrors of what they're experiencing. This is what they said to her. She says that she thought that her daughter was going to die overnight because it was so cold. They had just crossed the river. They were wet. Desperate. Mato says she started knocking on doors, asking for help. She says that she prayed to God, that she hugged her daughter as tight as she could and tried to warm her with her own body heat as much as she could to try to save her daughter's life. So, Mr. Secretary Rosa is still with us. And, Rosa, I want you to have a chance to ask uh, the Secretary a question since you're the one who's there. Yeah, and thank you so much, Mr. Secretary, for your time. I really want to focus on the human impact because I'm the one who interviews these people face to face. And I can tell you that I've interviewed women in Mexico who really just wanted to seek asylum in the United States, but they were expelled under Title 42 back to Mexico. And once there, after that, they were kidnapped, they were raped, and these are not isolated cases. As you know, there are many cases, thousands of cases of violent acts against uh, migrants who've been expelled under Title 42 since President Biden took office. So my question to you is, what is the U.S. government doing to prevent such violent acts on individuals who are simply just trying to come to the United States and seek asylum? Rosa, it is precisely what I shared with Poppy and that you and I have discussed uh, previously. It's precisely why we are trying to build the safe and orderly pathways to the United States. We're trying to spare these individuals the trauma that they endure by placing their lives and their life savings in the hands of smugglers. We have, and it's also why we have conducted an unprecedented attack against the smuggling organizations. We have accomplished more than 7,000 arrests. We have um, dedicated uh, really untold resources, personnel, technology, investigative capabilities to break up these smuggling organizations, to disrupt them. You and I have both seen too much tragedy on the border. It's precisely why we're trying to build the safe and lawful pathways that we announced yesterday and that we've been implementing since day one. Would you, Secretary, qualify what is happening on the border right now as a crisis? You know, uh, we, um, we have seen the situation at the border uh, managed in an orderly way. We have seen it in extraordinarily challenging circumstances as well. You can rest assured, Poppy, that we're doing everything that we possibly can to build a system that provides humanitarian relief in a safe and orderly yeah. way while trying to persuade Congress to fix what is a broken system. I understand that. Um but just what you're seeing, what you've seen the 20 times you've been there, the record number of migrants at the southern border in la last year, it was nearly 2.4 million. If that's not a crisis, Secretary, what is? You know, you know, Poppy, uh, we have seen 2.4 million encounters uh, at our southern border, and it is reflective of the greatest level of displacement of people in the world since World War II. It is reflective of a migration challenge that is gripping the entire hemisphere. When I was in Colombia, I spoke with the president of the country, the foreign minister, the minister of security, and they spoke of 2.4 million Venezuelans in Colombia now. We are seeing Costa Rica's population increasingly uh, formed by Nicaraguans. We've, we're seeing a tremendous movement of people throughout the hemisphere. And a regional challenge requires a regional solution, I, which is why President Biden has led 
the regional leaders in addressing it. I understand that, Mr. Secretary, but this is in the hands of you now and the Biden administration. I would just finally say that border officials have been consistently telling Rosa Flores, our colleague, they feel abandoned um, by this administration, by the federal government. So why has it taken two years for President Biden to go to the southern border? Poppy, um, uh, we have been dedicating uh, our efforts to the situation at the border since day one. Uh, we are incredibly proud of our frontline personnel who are tirelessly and selflessly dedicated uh, to the mission. The, the president knows the border very well. He has um, had his Secretary of Homeland Security visit multiple times since the very uh, initiation of the administration. And he's going to, um, to see the border, not for the first time, um, in his uh, public service career right, uh, this Sunday, that. and I'm looking forward to joining yeah. him there. But as president, to see it firsthand, the net effect. Um, Secretary Mayorkas, thank you very much for your time.